How much do you love grapes? A whole bunch. So that's why you garden. <laughs> Guten yardening, everybody. Today, I'm going to take you on a full garden tour and harvest. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video, but I think you're really going to enjoy it. Instead of getting up close with every single vegetable right away, I'm going to do my best to acclimate you to our entire growing space so you can really get a nice tour and see just how we're using our property as much as we can. All right, we're going to start off in our front yard and space. This area in our garden gets the most sun out of the entire garden around our house. The sun can travel from one side to the other throughout the day. And in here we have seven untilled beds that we created two years ago and we've been upgrading ever since. And there is a ton of food in this area. We've got our okra, tomatoes, some peppers to get out of here. A lot of peppers so let's go ahead and get the vegetables out of here and then we'll continue the tour around our house let's go ahead and start with our okra here this dwarf okra that gets to be about three feet tall is loaded down with fruits and blossoms right now now i really love the blossoms on this okra i think our pollinators like them as well i think they're beautiful one of the things about growing okra and this is about the size that we like it right here is about two and a half to three inches long. One of the main questions I have read about okra is how to remove or reduce the amount of slime that you get on your okra. And there were a couple of things that I learned while reading up on that. One, apparently if you add an acidic element like uh, citrus or tomato, something along those lines, you can reduce some of the slime, but you probably won't get rid of it altogether. But probably more importantly, I learned that this slime on these okra actually contain a large amount of fiber and when you eat them that actually helps with digestion so people who have IBS apparently can benefit from eating some of that slime so it might not actually be all that beneficial to get rid of the slime from your okra if you can handle that texture I got a ton more on here that are about an inch and a half or so. So another couple days and we'll be harvesting even more of this okra. One thing, I'm gonna get this into the refrigerator right away, the ones that I've harvested. I found that they don't store well out of the refrigerator at all. And they start to go bad after just a day or so. But one thing's for sure, don't wash these until you're ready to eat them. Now we've talked a lot about our peppers in some of our previous harvest videos and one of the things I said was that I really like to wait until those peppers get red before I harvest. But today I'm going to go through and I'm going to pull out all of the bigger peppers regardless of if they're red or if they're green because we want to see if there's time left if these will flower and fruit again. That would be really nice to get an additional harvest even if it's a green harvest off of these peppers and there are plenty of these peppers that fit that description of big enough to harvest all right we've got our okra and our peppers out now i've gone ahead and i've already fed my peppers so we need to come in here and start taking out some of these tomatoes. Now I've already talked about our black creme in a previous harvest. I've got some beautiful black creme tomatoes to harvest out of here. Some super sweet 100s. That right there, that's why you don't want any of your vegetables to touch the ground. You see those slugs? What looks like some kind of snail getting on here. We'll try to keep our tomatoes and all of our vegetables up off the ground. You can see some of our Roma tomatoes here. Those are starting to ripen up as well. Didn't produce as well for us as some of our other varieties, I would say. This purple Cherokee, though, is getting really close. They're starting to turn. It's what we've been waiting for with some of our bigger tomatoes. They're a little bit behind this season, but starting to turn color. Not quite ready yet. But I've got a lot more tomatoes than just here in our front yard and space to harvest as well. But let me go ahead and get these off of here. I really do love these super sweet 100s. And I don't regret not planting more cherry tomatoes this year, primarily because we had so many volunteer to come up. So I still got plenty of cherry tomatoes while I was outside. But man, those are magical looking. Oh, check this out. 
I love it. A nice bee in there pollinating the volunteer summer squash that's on top of our green stalk in our front yard in space. Oh, come on out. <laughs> He's covered in pollen. You know, it's pretty amazing to me that this plant is still growing. And we've still got, there's one right there. We've got another one down here. We've still got some of these coming in. Again, an unintentional planting in our green stalk. There, our sweet potatoes are looking great. One of the things you're gonna notice as I continue this tour is we have about a half a dozen of these green stalks around our property just performing really nicely. We absolutely love our green stalk as a part of this garden setup. We have another one of our green stalks and this one is covered in strawberries. Now these strawberries actually just stopped fruiting and you see they're still nice and lush green. They're sending out their runners everywhere. So part of our front garden space is now transitioning into that fall garden area. We've taken some of our seedlings, some cabbage seedlings in here, some purple and some green cabbage, and we recently transplanted those. And that's in the spot where we previously had our cauliflower. So we had to go through and really amend this soil nicely, add some more of our blood meal to take care of the nitrogen. And here where we had our broccoli, we've transplanted a whole bunch more of our pepper plants. And these are ones that we started at the same times as the ones that were already fruiting, but we just never transplanted them. We never up potted them. And if you look, you can see there's already peppers forming on these. So that's part of our fall garden. One of the things I love about the front of our house is this beautiful pollinator garden that we have out here. In the last two years, we've spent a lot more time getting these flowers in here. A lot of zinnias, a lot of marigolds in here to try to create a space where we can attract as many bees and other pollinators as possible. And when you're trying to grow a lot of food, getting those bees, you're getting all those pollinators here, that's essential. Now, as I start moving from the front yard and space around to the side, the western side of our house, I want you to notice how much grass space there is. There's probably about four feet here. It's one of the wider paths that we have, and you're gonna see it's gonna get a lot narrower as we go around because one of the things we talk a lot about is making sure that we maximize our growing space as much as possible. Now I gave a sneak peek of this in one of our recent videos, but you can see here on the left-hand side as we start to move around, this is our peach tree. This is only year three and it's about 15 feet tall, growing mostly vertically. And this is gonna take us right up to our grapes as well. But if I look up in this peach tree right now, year three, there's a ripe one or ready to come off. Look at these beauties up here. Look at the color on these peaches. There aren't that many, but again, very young tree and we're just getting started. And hiding right underneath the leaves here in our grapes, we've got a whole bunch of grapes coming in. Two different varieties. Let me take another step back here. Two different varieties growing into each other right here over this trellis that when we walk through, and I'm gonna harvest some of these grapes today, but when we walk through, you see the beginnings of a pathway. It's like the entrance into another world. It's almost hard to believe we're in the same spot with all these houses around when you see all this lush greenery. And you're gonna see that this is true around our entire property that we're trying to grow up against our house. Here's some summer squash growing up against our house and some tomatoes, and we're growing away from our house. So both sides, there's growth happening. And one of the things that makes this side of the house so exciting are all of these sweet potato plants in this 32 foot raised bed behind me because team potato and team sweet potato, your times are coming. We're gonna have potato harvest, we're gonna have sweet potato harvest over the next month or so, and I'm really getting excited. I think this is definitely the celebration of our gardening season. The sweet potato harvest, the potato harvest, some of our favorite moments have come from those harvests. Now our plan to lay those videos out is to have multiple harvests. We have a lot of different focus for our harvest. Some of these are experiments. Some of these are gonna be looking at different varieties. We'll give you the opportunity to guess harvest weights, which is gonna be exciting. And we'll do our fall giveaway. 
We've done a fall giveaway for the last two years and this is going to be our biggest yet. And this bed filled with over a hundred sweet potato plants, we're really hoping for great production. Now I've definitely stressed this in the past, but I wanna remind you that when you're growing a root crop like this, you can also take advantage of that vertical space. Here you see some of our tomatoes. We have five different varieties of tomatoes growing in here. This is a Kellogg's breakfast tomato. And we also have down here some of our peppers that are taking off and you can see they are blooming as well. So what we're trying to do here is to maximize growing area and it's just so lush and green in here with so much potential for a harvest. Are you ready, Team Sweet Potato? Now this is the western side of our house that you're looking at here, so we don't get as much sunlight because the house blocks a lot of it until late morning. Now one of the things that you're gonna notice whenever you grow like we do and try to take up as much space as possible, when things are in full bloom, it can be a bit of a challenge to even walk through the pathway. I haven't focused very much on the grapes growing right beside our house here, and I probably should because it's loaded down with grapes. I mean, look at all these, and they don't, they're actually pretty soft. Let me see. It's actually really sweet. They don't even look that ripe, but man. Let's take a look at the next ones down. I gotta be super careful not to step on my sweet potatoes here. Take a look at this. We are loaded down with grapes this year. All right, I'm getting down to the end of our sweet potato bed. We have one more raised bed here right by our house, another part of our fall garden. We've got eggplant, we've got peppers that we planted in here. And look at this, there's more borage that's again, self-seeded in here. But there you go, eggplant and peppers. I don't think it's possible to have too many peppers, especially how easy they are to preserve. All right, right down at the end of the side of our house, we have our root stout bed. All right, I think you can see there's the other end of the pathway we just came down, and here's our root stout bed. Now you're gonna notice there's a giant hole in the middle of our root stout bed, and that's because the potato variety that was planted there died back before everything else, and we had to get it out of the ground because we didn't want those potatoes to rot. So we've still got multiple other varieties that are still in the process of flowering, they've gone through and some of them are dying back as well but hopefully we can keep these for as long as possible now nothing along the western side of our house is ready to harvest yet except for those grapes and I am going to harvest some of those grapes as a part of this but now we're at the back of our property for our main garden space all right let's back up just a little bit so you can see the entirety of this garden space it's about seven feet wide by 40 feet long so about 200 and 80 square feet of fenced in garden space. Now, when we first started this garden area, we only had about four feet of width. So just a little bit more than half the width that we have now. But one of the things we talk about over and over again is minimizing this. This is our lawn space, and we really didn't see the need to have so much of it. In fact, I probably could go even farther but we didn't see the need to have so much of it. And so we doubled, basically doubled the size of this garden area. Now this is considered to be a full sun garden, but we don't get the amount of sun that we get in our front yard and area because the sunlight doesn't hit back here until about 10 or 10, 15 in the morning. But once it does hit, we get all that great afternoon and evening sun. You know, one of the things we considered early on was building a fence around our property, but we wanna take advantage of all that sunlight and I think that having a fence might detract from some of that. So our gardens basically have become our fence because they're the outline of our property. I think we can kind of divide this garden up into eight foot segments because that's how I have it laid out. We've got these little S clips where I can unhook each eight foot segment of fence and open it out so that I can get in although it's only about two feet tall, so I can actually step over. But this first eight foot segment is filled with brassicas. In here, we've got our Brussels sprouts, along with some weeds that you can see right here I need to get to. And we have some of our cabbages. And in the back, we have our asparagus. We do have some of our asparagus seeds turning 
red already this orangish red we did a full video on how to save asparagus seeds i'll put a link to that in the description this could be another seed that we give away as part of our seed share this middle eight feet has tomatoes beans and cucumbers inside with a couple of eggplant toward the back and right beside these pole beans we have our other variety which is our lima beans our pole lima beans and these are just blossoming but on the trellis right next door we've got the beginnings of these limas here and they are spread throughout this entire trellis it is absolutely amazing to me how many pole beans a single bean plant can produce and here we have some cucumbers ready to be harvested so i'm going to add these cucumbers to our harvest right here you can see them all the way back in here last season our cucumber plants lasted a really long time but you can already see one of our cucumber plants here off to the side has started to die back and so that's not really going to be productive anymore but this plant looks nice and healthy so i think we'll get a good bit more off of this one of our community members recently asked for the refrigerator pickle recipe that we typically use so i'm going to put a link to that in the description as well And then our larger tomato varieties, like our watermelon tomato right there, take a look at the lines on this one. That's still green, but it's starting to ripen up as well. So that's about 40% of our main garden space that I've shown you what's growing there. And of course we have a whole lot more growing farther down, but I'm gonna switch over to right beside our house now and show you a couple of the plants that we have to pull off there because this part of the main garden is right across from that bed that's right up against our house. And this bed is actually even more shaded than our main garden space because it's right up against the house, which means it doesn't start to get direct sunlight until after 11. 11 30 or so but you can see some of our cabbages in here that we just planted as a part of our fall crop that's planted in after we harvested this winter kohlrabi and i've got multiple kohlrabi in here that need to be harvested these color green leaves we've got so much on here these need to come out as well so i've got three or four winter kohlrabi a volunteer cherry tomato and right beside that we have our golden raspberry, which is still producing. Look at this, our golden raspberry is going to have raspberries here in another week or so, those will be ready. By the way, I wanna send a special shout out to the Japanese beetles this year because for the most part, they left our garden alone, or at least they've done so, so far. That is amazing. All right, the other couple segments of our main garden here include more brassicas we actually have some cabbage in here that's ready this is ready to be pulled out some more purple cabbage that we planted the seedlings you can see them in between just recently and of course our kale which is looking luscious i think this is our biggest head right now you can see there's some slug in there there we go that's a pretty nice sized cabbage. I'll put this one beside my head so you can see the size. It's nice and heavy too. But one of the things I wanna point out about this part of the garden, and I'm gonna take a step back here so you can see it. You see where the shadow and the shade is still. We've got this part, and this is the eastern side of our property now, this part where the house isn't blocking the sun because that's our garage. It's laid out into our other area. And so this gets more sunlight than any other spot in our garden. The sunlight starts here at around 8 a.m. And this is the area where we have our summer squash growing. We have our green grillers. You see it's a little bit bigger than I should pick it for the green grillers. This is a really cool variety here that grows in about 35 to 40 days. Really fast summer squash. But I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the ones that are ready, isn't that pretty? You know, even though these summer squash don't store all that long out on the counter, I love the taste so much. We have to keep growing them. All right, now I am down behind our main garden area. So this is the back of our property. This is where we harvested our onions. We've grown in hay bales back here, and now we took some of the extra cucumber seedlings that we had and we planted them. Now these are not protected. Oh, look, there's a little frog. These are not protected from any of the animals out here like the rabbits. And so 
you can see what one of the rabbits has probably done here as another plant that didn't make it up here but these are starting to turn that nice dark green since we've transplanted them they were getting a little bit yellow you can see that right here but these are looking nice and we have those planted all along the back because at the back of our garden we have some beans that i missed and we have this four foot piece of fencing that i put up in order to prevent animals from biting through the plastic fencing underneath and so we have a natural trellising that they can grow up on so that'll be part of our fall garden but for now the reason we're back here is because some of our volunteer tomatoes these beautiful orange tomatoes these are ready to be picked along with some of our volunteer sun golds one of the commenters suggested these are probably a sun gold variety and i think they're absolutely right so we're going to get these picked off here as part of our harvest as well try to convince me that you can come out and pick cherry tomatoes without eating any go ahead try it all right moving from the edge of our main garden space that takes us out into the area behind our garage into the eastern part of our house an area that's filled with different raised containers down here we have our potato experiment for you team potato you're actually closer along than team sweet potato is because a lot of our potatoes now are starting to die back like the one in this diy vertical garden here which has our sweet potatoes at the bottom and our potatoes at the top now the potatoes are definitely going to come out before the sweet potatoes at the bottom but one of the things i really love about this area is that it gets full sun and it's just so inviting as it's right off our patio and let me bring you that view from our patio as i look out over all these vertical gardens all these amazing raised beds now specifically from our patio you can see we've got one two three and a fourth green stalk out here this one is growing potatoes we're pretty close to being done with this one probably another couple of weeks for all this to die back fully but these three green stalks are our fall green stalks and i'm planning to do a video to talk about how we set this up where we have in this case some eggplant on the top tier of this one and a whole bunch of different spinach varieties growing down below this one we planted with some bush beans and this one we have herbs growing the whole way around the top from your basil your parsley your sage and then we have spinach this is actually going to be giant noble spinach we found that that does really well in our area we grew a whole bunch of it last year but these three green stalks are going to be great fall producers for us i think very much so they all look really wonderful even though we're just getting started all right here's our back garden and then along the interior of our house here we have our heritage red raspberries which we've trimmed back we have our carrots that we planted just a couple of weeks ago and they're looking pretty good at this point point. and then we have our black raspberry our summer bearing raspberries here well you'll forgive the sound but our ac is running right now that brings us around to the garden that gets the most shade and here we have some more of our black summer bearing raspberries that we allowed to spread over here and some more of our tomato plants that's right up against the back of our garage this keyhole bed looks pretty horrible that's actually a really good thing for us because these are our potatoes they're nearing harvest time in here we have five different varieties of potatoes growing in this one keyhole bed and even though this area doesn't look majestic like it did a couple of weeks ago what we see out here is the promise of those future harvests and for you team potato this is what it's all about again i'm so excited for the upcoming harvest celebrations that we're going to have i can't wait to get on there and be live with you as a community talk to the different community members it's one thing to get the comments from you and i definitely appreciate those but it's another thing to be able to comment and go back and forth in real time that is coming before you know it so what do we have to harvest in this area right now well not our sweet potatoes we do have a whole bunch of tomato plants growing down on compost row these are some of our bigger variety tomatoes they are looking fantastic take a look down in here look at these beauties and i know we're still waiting for them to ripen up but i got patience i promise you i've got patience up along compost row right here we have our eggplant growing look at this this eggplant is ready to be harvested today and here we have some of our watermelons growing you know i really 
love the little bit of trellising that we have done here. You see that watermelon right there? There's another one right here. I love this trellising right behind our compost. It really expands what we're able to do here. But let's get this eggplant off of here. It's a purple beauty right there. But let's go back here where we have some beets growing in a couple of our smaller raised beds. Here's some of our lettuce right beside our beets. But the last couple of seasons, we've been doing a multi-sow way of planting these beets. And they've just been producing really nicely for us. What's that, a cluster of about six right there? So I'm gonna pull off just like so. Fantastic. All right, I've got beets to harvest out of both of these small raised beds. And for those of you who are new to the channel, these are two of the only raised beds that we ever bought. I think we paid something like $35 a piece for these. It's really not worth it to buy, in my opinion, when you can build bigger for, for less. Right, we're just down from our patio here in one of our three by six beds that had carrots in it before. And we transplanted some of our tomatoes in here to see if we could get a fall tomato harvest. I don't know if there'll be enough time for us to get a good harvest off of here, but we had the extra plants. Why not plant them and not let them go to waste? All right, to reacclimate you, here's the backyard. And now we're gonna move up the other side, the Eastern side of our house. So here's our compost row some peppers that we need to plant, and then our raised beds. These are our long, skinny raised beds that I built two years ago. And in here we have our sweet potatoes, some more of our larger tomatoes. Let me show you this real quick. Now, one of the benefits of growing these larger tomatoes, I've noticed that there are fewer tomatoes, but they are just monstrous. These are some of our pink ox heart tomatoes in here. A lot of different variety possible. These are the ones that we've been keeping trimmed back. So you can see there's plenty of air circulation through here. And this is our first time growing these sweet potato plants in these raised beds. So we'll see how well they perform. I know we've worked really hard to amend the soil mix, so I think it's gonna produce a lot better. Actually, I think both these beds are gonna produce better this year. So all along the exterior of this area, we have our raised beds here. We have some peppers for our fall crop and some more eggplant along with these nice tomatoes. And then on the other side of a very small path there, right beside our patio, we have our container garden. And our container gardens are right on the patio here. We have potatoes, we have some of this chamomile. I'm telling you, chamomile is kind of like strawberry spinach. You plant it once and look at this. It's like a, a carpet of chamomile that comes back when it reseeds. We just did a video on our purse lane and here are our two purslane plants right here. But I really like the idea of having a patio container garden. And I love the idea that we can put it on a walkway. We can really keep it anywhere that we would like. Some of our New York tomatoes that are starting to turn color, starting to ripen. Because I think that's such a limiting factor for so many people is not having the ability to have space that would be traditionally allocated to gardening. Here on our walkway, we have a couple more of these eggplant. We have three eggplants growing in one small container and you can see there's some pretty prolific production. I'm only going to harvest these right here, these two, because these are the biggest. But there's what, five, six more on here? And it's just started fruiting like this, so these are in great shape. Take a look at our habanero peppers. This plant is loaded with habaneros at this point. Actually, we have one habanero, two, and here's our third and our fourth habanero. So four habanero plants, and here are our jalapenos. So if you're not into the really spicy pepper, jalapeno might be the way to go. Now this is the only side of the house where we don't have vegetables growing right up against the house, in this case, the garage. Instead, we have a bunch of pollinator flowers. We started off with bushes around here, and we never took them out because we really like them. But we got our marigolds and we've got our garlic chives. This garlic chives plant has so many pollinators on it every day. I honestly think if there was one plant that I could say, hey, you need to grow this if you want to get pollinators, the garlic chives might be it. Not only is it beautiful, but man, look at this. Pollinators of every shape and kind on here. 
All right, as I look back along those long raised beds here, you can see one of our DIY vertical gardens. And the cucumber plant that's on it is starting to die back, but it's been a really nice, I would say prolific producer so far. It's still got blossoms on here, so I'm not sure how many more of these we're gonna get, but there are a couple more inside as well. You can see this one here is fully formed. We got another one right down in here. So what do you do if you run out of space, even on your lawn area, your patio, and you still have more plants that you wanna grow? Well, in our case, what we've done is we've started planting up our driveway. Now it's not a very long driveway, but this does provide us with some extra space. In this case, we have some things that my children planted. These are Parisian carrots. They're the little tiny round carrots. And of course, we've gotta have some radishes and all these growing in our little garbage can lids are about two and a half inches deep. We have some awesome curb appeal from these marigolds and these sweet potatoes growing in hay bales all along both sides of our driveway. And then we've created some really cool planters, I think, and maybe this is an idea that you could work with. We've got a tomato in here, we've got basil, we've got lemon balm in here, and we've got parsley. Just a nice little mixture of vegetable and herb all in one spot and then we have some of our tomato plants that we're growing in containers now i'm not going to talk too much about these tomatoes because i have a different video lined up to do that and the reason being these were ones that were given to us by some of our community members and i want to share more about that individually all right there's our driveway garden and that's going to move us to the very front of our house almost back to where we started to another vertical diy where we've got some more cucumbers to harvest Right down in here, you can see them cucumbers right there and a bit of sad news for us. And I finally found the culprit this morning. These were loaded down the whole way down with sweet potatoes. Actually, you can see the sweet potatoes. Well, what's left of them right here. I found a rabbit out here this morning chewing these off. So the rabbits finally discovered our sweet potatoes. We still have quite a few in here, but uh, it's just disappointing, but something you learn to deal with. I think as a gardener. All right, I'm gonna get these cucumbers harvested and then we're gonna take a look at the entirety of our harvest. Right, right in front of me, you see 63 pounds of food. And I wanna know what you're feeling right now because I'm hoping now that you've seen our entire property, I've tried to give you a good look at how we're doing what we're doing here. I'm really hoping that what you're feeling is that there are some of these things that we do here that you can try as well. This is exactly the reason why we garden. All of this food is either gonna be eaten right away or put into storage so that we have plenty to eat this winter. And I am super excited for another harvest, especially since it won't be our last. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video and found some inspiration in what we're doing. If you did, please don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.